Hello, my name is Greg and this is Greg's Wildlife and today I've got this smart bird feeder. The wonderful people at BirdKiss have sent me this to try it out today. Why is it a smart bird feeder? Well, it has this camera attached to it and this camera will trigger every time a bird visits the bird feeder. And not only that, but it has an app attached to it and it will send you notifications to your phone when birds visit and it will also identify those birds as well. So I'm really excited to try this out in my garden in today's video. What I'm going to do is going to take you through all the bits that come with it and then we're going to fill it up with seed, put it out in the garden and let it do its thing. I'm very excited. Thank you very much for joining me today. Let's see what we've got. So first of all, the bird feeder itself. It is all completely metal, it's very solid, and it's also, word of warning, very heavy as well. So you can need somewhere sturdy to fit it. So to help you with that, we've got several ways in which you can attach this uh, in your garden. It comes with this bracket, which will attach to the underside here, uh, screwing in place. Now this will allow you either to place it on a pole, if you have the right diameter pole, which will screw in tight, whoops, something like this, or also you can, it comes with all the screws that you can attach and screw it onto a more permanent fitting. If you don't have anywhere to screw it to, it also comes with a strap and you can actually use this the strap on and strap it to like a tree or something like that so it's less permanent and no invasive, no, no drilling needed. So that's really useful as well. Now, if you don't have anywhere that you want to be able to place the bracket, it also has this, this is completely removable as well, this handle here, which you can use to hang it on like this. And that's probably what I'm going to do today, if I can find somewhere that's sturdy enough to hold its weight. There's no seed in it yet, so that's going to be even heavier when we do so. But it is heavy because it is full metal, and uh, it's all metal construction, so it will protect against squirrels, and that's when visiting it, so it's going to be pretty durable, I think. Uh, so it does come with uh, all the kind of screws that you need. And one thing I really like, it also comes with the raw plugs as well. That's a lot of products, they don't bother including these things. So if you try to screw it into something, the screws don't, don't hold, hold properly. It also, actually, I've just noticed, uh, I didn't see this before. Uh, we'll, get, we'll get on to the, uh, the attachments now. It has these things. Now these are fruit holders. There are holes in the metal grill at the front that you can screw things into. And so you can screw that in, and if you get a bit of uh, fruit, you can just stick it on there, and that just kind of holds it in place. There's three, there's three of those. Not only that, but we also have this bowl thing here. Now this actually unscrews, so I think that would probably be really good for like a suet bowl. So you can place a suet bowl in there, tie it up, and that will also screw onto one of the four holes of uh, the attachments that we have here as well. Uh, the other attachment it comes with is this thing. Now this, uh, I think, is a hummingbird feeder. Now for me, that's not going to be any use because we don't have hummingbirds in the UK, so they're not ever going to visit. Uh, but yeah, but I guess you'd put nectar in there and there is a small hole on the lid of this thing which the uh, hummingbirds would put their beaks through or their tongues through, got really long tongues, to drink the nectar. Um, so, I mean, this obviously is what comes off so you could use it as a, a receptacle for some other kind of seed if you wanted something else on there. Um, but yeah, so that's probably not useful for me. Uh, and then we also have this tray with four separate compartments, which will just slot in uh, on the front of the hanger like this uh, for putting in anything, really, uh, different types of seeds, maybe some larger seeds that perhaps don't fit into here uh, through the grill. And also, not only that, but one thing I'm pretty blown away by we have a solar panel. Uh, so this thing will attach to the, uh, the, the charging port for the camera and you can have it fixed outside so it will charge itself uh, using the solar panel. So you don't have to bring it in to charge up the camera when it's run out of batteries. So that is super amazing. Um, absolutely love all the attachments that come with this thing. Uh, you've also got the instruction manual, a quick start guide, and uh, details of how you can download the app to your phone as well. The camera's position is completely adjustable, so up and down. So make sure you get the best angle when the birds visit. And on the back, we have the charging port here. We also have the antenna. This is for the Wi-Fi for the camera to connect to the app. Uh, the top here will flip open, and this is how you access the top to put in your bird feed. And then it clips shut. And this sloped roof keeps the rain out of the main body of the, uh, the feeder. So that's pretty much everything we've got going on here. So I think what we need to do now is to put some bird seed in, 
find somewhere to, out in the garden to put it and hopefully we'll get some visitors very very soon. Let's put in some seed. I don't want to overfill it in case it doesn't get eaten. I also don't want to make it too heavy. Luckily my existing bird feeder seems stable enough to take the weight so this should make a good position. I place a suet ball in the cage and attach it to the feeder. I filled this up with mealworms and sunflower seeds but I don't think this is the best thing for it. The dish has no drainage holes so when it rains it will just fill up with water and soak the food. I'm not sure what this would be best for. If you have any ideas let me know in the comments. Lastly I install the app on my phone and connect to the camera. So I think now's a really good time just to have a very quick talk about the app. So the app gives you complete control over the camera settings. Uh, you can connect to the camera anywhere you have your phone. Uh, you can watch a live stream of the camera at any time and it will send notifications to you every time it picks up motion or detects a bird. Uh, you have control over the settings of the camera so you can say how sensitive you want it to be, how frequently you want it to record, um, how sensitive the motion detection is. Uh, you can set how long you want each recording to be and how long it waits in between each recording uh, so you've got a lot of uh, settings you can play with uh, also this does kind of double up as a security camera so there is options where you can uh, hit an alarm button and it will sound an alarm through the camera you can switch on a light through the camera do it all remotely through your app uh, I think I haven't tried it out but I think there's an option where you can click a button and you can speak into your phone and it will actually come out of the camera itself uh, so it doubles up as kind of a, a doorbell security camera if you were to use it in that respect uh, but the main thing that we want from the app, uh, for my purposes, is the bird identification app. So every time a bird lands on the feeder, it will send you a notification to your phone to let you know a bird has been detected. And if it knows what it is, it will also give you an idea of what it thinks the bird is. So let's have a look at some of the results and show you this is what you've been waiting for really, is to see what it looks like through the camera and how good is the app at identifying those birds. These are some of the first videos recorded by the camera. As you can see there's no birds but there is a lot of movement. It was very windy that first day and one of the downsides of having the camera free hanging is that every time the wind blows it triggers the motion detector on the camera. For the first two days I didn't get any notification of birds visiting the feeder, just wind triggered motion. I was getting worried I'd have nothing to show for this video but I think that's just a case of bad timing. This time of year is notoriously bad for attracting birds to garden feeders. They just don't visit as often as they do earlier in the year. But I didn't have to wait too long. This was the first notification of a bird visiting. Just a fleeting visit, but the bird knows the feeder is here now. Hopefully it will return. It is worth mentioning that the bird ID function of the app is part of a monthly paid subscription. You do get one month free and then you can either buy it uh, monthly or annually. Uh, monthly starts from about £2.59 a month or about just over £30 for a year and there are basically various upgrades, slightly more expensive versions to get larger cloud storage. Um, it's not too expensive but it, it is definitely worth mentioning, something to consider before you go ahead and purchase this item. It's not just birds the camera will detect, it will also trigger when it sees people. Here I am checking out my bee hotel, which actually has quite a lot of residents. The leafcutter bees have been very busy. Hopefully I can show you them at some point in the future. So one question I had was how good was the bird identification of the app? It's a bit tricky to answer completely as only two species of bird visited the feeder over the time of this video, a blue tit and a Eurasian collared dove. The app was accurate on the blue tit, but the dove was a bit hit and miss. It would usually identify it as an African collared dove. However, if you select the identification on the app, it will tell you how sure it is as a percentage and offer some alternatives, and Eurasian collared dove would often be an option. However, it occasionally came up with some very unlikely visitors. This is apparently an African sacred ibis, or possibly an African spoonbill, or a great egret, or a Cape Barren goose. This would have been a much more interesting video if it was. So the ID ability isn't perfect, but more often than not it at least recognised it as a collar dove, even if it usually thought it was of the African variety. At some point I placed a banana on a fruit holder to some interesting and amusing results. It's not just the birds that visited, but this beautiful red admiral butterfly attracted by the banana. It's 
Not just butterflies that like the fruit, but this great night shot shows us that moths are active too. Well, sometimes the camera would pick up movement of fruit flies on the banana and misidentify the banana as a bird. Okay, so I've had this up here now for around 12 days and the battery kind of ran out about a day ago. So it's pretty good battery life. I haven't had the uh, solar power connected. Obviously, if I had, it probably would have lasted a lot longer. Maybe it would still be going. Uh, so what do I think of it so far? Well, the picture quality, as you've seen, is really good. Um, it picks up motion, is very sensitive. Uh, that is one of the downsides, though, of having it hanging freely on the uh, bird feed like I have, is every time the wind blows, uh, it triggers the motion, even though nothing's actually visited uh, the camera. Now, as, as we talk about visitations, unfortunately, as you've seen, I've only had two bird species visit it. The, uh, the great tit, or no, the blue tit, rather, uh, and the collared dove. Um, but I think that's just bad timing, really, because we are in uh, August, sort of the middle to end of August, and this is not a good time for birds to visit bird feeders. Uh, there's a lot of food around, um, they're, they're doing their summer molt, so there's, uh, they don't come to bird feeders very often at this time of year. So I don't think that's nothing to do with the bird feeder itself, more of just a case of just bad timing the time of year. If we'd had it earlier on in the year, probably would have been fantastic. Um, and as you can see, the, uh, the app isn't uh, great at identifying, um, but again, we've only had the two species, so I don't know how uh, it would be fair through some of the other species. It's definitely kind of something I want to test out uh, at different times of the year. But overall, I've been really impressed with it, and uh, I really look forward to trying it out uh, throughout the winter to see what kind of winter visitors we get to the bird feeder and of course spring and early summer next year to see what kind of results we can get and see how reliable that AI app is at identifying those birds. Um, but yeah, I just want to say thank you so much to BirdKids for sending me this bird feeder and of course if you want to get one for yourself all the details will be in the description of this video. I uh, hope you found this one interesting. Let me know what you think down in the comments section. And of course, if you have any more questions about it, just let me know. Um, but basically, I've been really impressed with it. I really like it. I can't wait to use it more. Uh, I'm going to get the battery charged up and get it back out. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.